subscribe, repeat. Welcome everybody to the Bluetooth breakdown. Did we just both clap at the same time? I didn't mean That's to. No, <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so we have Joe with us from Believers Talk. You can find Joe's channel uh, at YouTube, Believers Talk. Uh, Joe has been a contributor on our hashtag sports channel in our uh, post game show and on all our videos. You can always find him in the comment section. We're thrilled to have him on to talk Buffalo Bills defense uh, as part of our Bluetooth breakdown. Joe, how you doing, buddy? Hey, guys, how you doing? You're doing well. Doing good. How's the weather down in, uh, you're in Pittsburgh, right? Or you're not in Pittsburgh, but you're... Lancaster. Uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm even further away. Uh, it rained last night, but other than that, we're doing quite well. How, how are you guys doing? Uh, no snow, man. It's it's no January snow. with no snow. We'll take it. It's fine. If Mario's driving, it's probably better that way, so... Yeah, big time. <laughs> big time. So we want to talk Buffalo Bills defense, and just to kind of get the conversation going, because we're going to talk season recap, right? I think one of the biggest right. conversations that a lot of people want to talk about right away is why did we sign Starla Tulele to such a big contract, and why did he do nothing all season? Right? That's the biggest complaint I hear about this defense for all sure. the problems that it had. So when you look at the season in review, was Star mm -hmm. was Star worth the money season one? And what is really the driver behind that contract? Is it is this what we're gonna get from him year three, year four, year five? Is he gonna make it to year five? Like where where are you with that contract? I mean, I think at the beginning of the year oh I'm sorry, you guys talk you, no, no, yeah, no, are you no. asking me? No, after you. All right, cool. Uh, you know, I think actually at the beginning of the year, he didn't do as bad as people make it out to be. Um, I think, uh, you know, a lot of times your defensive tackles, they're not going to get those sack numbers that everyone's expecting. However, you look at the contract we signed him to, it's a pretty big contract. Talking about five years, uh, $50 million, it looks like from my end. So, um, yeah, you want more production on that spot. Next year, he's, he's, his base salary is $7.15 million. Um, and, and, you know, you want more production. So, yeah, that's obviously been a disappointment this season. But you can't expect someone to come into a new system and pick it up right away either. Um, we've seen players in the past get better production uh, as years have gone on. And we know Leslie Frazier on this defense. We've even seen Leslie Frazier early in the season not be able to um, – not be able to – do the play calling correctly, you know, Coach McDermott had to take over for him. So in that respect, maybe maybe there's a growing process involved. Yeah, I, I think, and Mario, you could speak to this. This isn't Sean McDermott's defense. We've no. talked about this, right? No. So there's, there's, just, there's definitive differences between the defense that McDermott likes to run versus Leslie Frazier. Well, it's interesting right. to me to see all the stuff that goes on and people talking about Star in that respect where we actually did a breakdown of his contract. But it's not as daunting as everyone thinks it is, and the Bills can get out of it after year three with you know yeah. very, very limited cap penalty. But the thing about Star is if you want to talk about this defense with being ranked like the second overall defense, how could you say that one just one guy – wasn't doing his job. You know what I mean? If, if he's applying pressure, if he's doing all the little things that has to be done in from a defensive tackle position and other people around him are succeeding from that, how could you say that it, it, he was not productive in his season? Yeah, yeah, he's not getting the tackles. He's not getting the sacks, like you said. However, everyone else around him is benefiting from what he's doing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, when you take a look at the expectation for Star, right? So, yeah, he didn't have any sacks this year, but – what is this, year six of him in the league? Mm -hmm. Year five, year six? He's only got 11 and a half career sacks. Like, that's, yeah. he's not a sack machine. That's not his thing. He had 17 tackles this season, but on average he has 22, 23. So, I mean, it's not really down. Plus, the Bills were really, really working him on rotation this season. Yeah. So his a snap guys, count was yeah. down. Yeah, his snap count was down. So I'm not really frustrated with Star. I think you're getting what you pay for with him. But with the mm -hmm. loss of Kyle Williams, what does that contract look like to you? You know, what does the Star edition look like to you going forward? I mean, he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to make more contributions. That's just the bottom line. It's not the sack numbers that disturb me. What disturbs me is when the Patriots run for 250 yards. You know, like things like that. Like Star was brought on to be a run stopper. And a lot of times this season, we looked really good in run defense, especially up the middle. But then you have games, I think it was the Colts game. You talk about the Patriots game where we, we were gashed in the run game and it just didn't make sense. So that's where I feel like Star really has to step up in the next couple seasons. Yeah, it's, I think that's a great point. Um, you know, and, and that kind of brings us to, to talk about the linebackers here in review, right? So um, 
when you look at those games where the Bills struggled keeping things contained in the middle, um, the Bills yeah. did a great job of that most of the season. We were talking about it on the post game. We're at like week eight. And we're like, damn, nobody runs on the Bills inside. What? Nobody runs on the Bills inside. Mm-hmm. And Mario, so Mario, give me your rundown of the linebacker season in review, right? Because it was a tough one. We talked, Joe just mentioned the Patriots gashed us in the run game. A, a billion percent true, but you were without Milano who mm-hmm. really seemed like the biggest piece of that linebacker. Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of the biggest things that your your responsibility as a defensive lineman is you have to try to take bodies off the, the guys on the second level. Now, I, 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 you know, reviewing the tape, I saw a bunch of things where Star would be double teamed. And mm-hmm. if he's double teamed, that means a linebacker has to get free and has to make the play. And, you know, we talked about the growing pains of Jermaine Edmonds and um, a lot of the things that, you know, that he was struggling with. And if you know if I if I'm a, if I'm Star Latulale and I take two guys on as blockers and Tremaine misses the tackle and the running back goes for 13 yards, well, is that really on me or is that on Edmonds? And you want to talk about the defensive line as a whole? I think when he was in Carolina, didn't Coney Ealy benefit from him there? And what, what has he done since? So he's bounced you know, around the league. The, yeah, he's with the Patriots. He's whatever. Yeah, you leave the Patriots. There's not many more stops after that. Belichick <laughs> can't work with you. But uh, you want to talk about certain things that go on with the, the linebackers around him. You know, Edmonds is a rookie coming in. Milano is his second year, and you have you know Lorenzo Alexander who can he, he pretty much cover up any mistake with his instincts now because he's been in the league for so long. But like he's he, his, his feet are getting a little slower. So um, you put him next to you put him next to Kyle Williams to get acclimated to how Buffalo football is, not Carolina football, how Buffalo football is, and then you put you put him next to a guy and try to motivate a Shaq Lawson. You know what I mean? Who's who's a guy that you know got called out in the media earlier in the year. So as far as the linebackers are concerned, his job is just to take bodies off of those linebackers so they're free to roam, they're free to make tackles. As far as the, his presence on the interior of that line. A defensive tackle who has gone to a Super Bowl, who knows how to do it, who knows the head coach. For a lot of young players who are going to be coming in and don't know McDermott, he's that bridge. So, you know, you look to him as a leader, especially now with Kyle Williams going and retiring. So, right. I just want to make sure that, that, I, that I'm circling back to linebacker, right? Yep. So, when we look at Tremaine Edmonds, this year was about growth for him. And yeah. even though, and I think we could all agree, if you take Milano, move Milano to the middle, you take Tremaine Edmonds, you, you move him outside, I keep doing you it, keep but doing it's, I think it's an important thing to mention. If you were really, really worried about Tremaine Edmonds' productivity, you move him outside, you let him right. go eat running back and quarterback all season. <laughs> That's all you worry about. You say, Tremaine, you go, you, you go wherever you think you should. Right? right, but you look at year two and you say, "Okay, Tremaine, let's move you in the middle." That season at outside hasn't helped him, no. right? Because right. no. it doesn't help with his vision. It doesn't help with anything. He would be a super productive outside linebacker, but that's not what the Bills want him for. They want him inside, so they took the season inside with all the growing pains that it was with Milano, who's only a second-year player, right? right? So they really took a lot of risk this season in the linebacker. A ton of risk, especially when you look at the ancillary linebackers they had on the roster. They had no depth at all at that position. So looking forward to next year, the Bills have to address linebacker in the free agent group. They have to bring in some they have to bring in some veteran presence in that linebacker group. The problem is, I don't know who that's gonna be. Like you look at who the Bills could pick off from the old Sean McDermott tree, and there's not a lot out there. Um, so I don't know if they're still going to do that in the draft. I don't know if they're going to do that in free agency. Um, I hope they're not addressing it in the draft because I don't want to see this linebacker group get younger. They're young enough as it is. I really, yeah. really feel like they have to add some veteran presence. And that brings us to the secondary, which was loaded with veteran presence compared to the rest of the roster. You had Hyde and Poyer in the back end. Now you lose yeah. Kyle Williams. Joe, what are your takes on the leadership in the secondary? Do you think... Um, Trey White steps up as the leader. Do you think that's Hyde or Poyer? Um, do you think there's somebody else in that secondary could step up as a leader in that secondary room? Because um, I know Kyle Williams doesn't directly impact the secondary, but he was a leader on the defense. He held guys accountable. You can't just assume one person's going to take over that role. So you look at you know this season and what happened. Um, you know what do we do this? What happened this season and how is it going to impact next season from a leadership perspective? Yeah, no, I, I look. Oh, God. 
No, 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 I didn't say anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, think, I think this has to be Travis White's, White's job to take over as the leader of this team. You know, he's the young guy. He's, he's been there two years now, but he's also been a guy that you know Bills fans will consider has been snubbed when it comes to Pro Bowl consideration. You know, top 100 player of the year, that kind of thing. Still don't know why he wasn't rookie of the year last season, but that's for another discussion. Um, but you, you look, you look at. Yeah, you look at Tredavious White, and you 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 kind of put the same responsibility on him to take over as leadership as you would Josh Allen. Now, obviously, the quarterback's a different position on offense, but you know you got this young guy, you got this guy who's been looked around the league as one of the better corners in the league already in his second season. So he has to step up and take over that leadership position. Now, the good thing about that is he does have Hyde and Poyer and to look at and say, hey, what's it like to be a leader of a team? You know, Hyde is, has been a great leader at times as well. So he has someone to kind of look to to mentor him in that way. He's probably talked to Kyle Williams through the past two seasons and said, hey, how to be a good leader. Um, so, and yeah, you're right. I don't think, I don't think what Kyle Williams meant for this team as a leader can be taken over by one spot. But that's why you have to look at every single level of the defense and say, who's the leader now on, on the line? Who's the leader now in the linebacking room? And who's the leader now in the uh, secondary? And that's that's where that will kind of go into play, I think. And that's how we will take over what we lose from Kyle Williams in a leadership role. Yeah, and when we take a look at, you know, what happened this season, the cornerback position was just shuffled constantly, constant shuffling. So we take a look at that. I mean, our perspective here is that that's a sign of a great scheme, right? The players, they if the scheme is understandable, you can shift guys in because you had Levi Wallace, you had Dean Marlowe, you had you guys who weren't even on rosters at the beginning of the season making yeah. starts for you and playing really well. Mm -hmm. um, you even had Raphael Bush, who had like a quiet season, but a great season. Yeah. Raphael Bush had the seventh most tackles on this defense this year. He was the utility yeah. guy. He yeah. used to come in for guys that were, you know, when, when Milano went out, he was the guy that would come in and play down in the box. Right. Uh, that he tried doing that with uh, Hyde initially and then putting Poyer, uh, putting uh, Bush in the back end, mm -hmm. and he got thrown out a couple times. So right. his strength really mm -hmm. is, is in supporting the run. And when you got Hyde and Poyer who already support the run, are already physical players, mm -hmm. you know that they're going to get dinged up here and there. You want to spell those guys as well. So I mean, Poyer had, a point. Busy, Poyer had a busy year 100 tackles for Poirier this year Oof. isn't that crazy when you look at it Oof. like I don't I mean I remember Poirier playing well I don't remember Poirier being the second leading tackler on this team right, right? right you know I don't but you know you look at the identity of this defense and they can shift guys in and out so in the year in review for the secondary it was a mixed bag but I think it speaks to what happens when you have an identity on defense and we'll get into yours on on your channel believers talk uh talking about the offense but i think there's a big difference between the defensive identity and the offensive identity right the defense has an identity you know what that is and they seem to be able to identify that and move forward with it so from from your perspective right the year in review was this about them being able to just evaluate talent, or was it the scheme that made the secondary pieces so interchangeable? I think I think it says a lot about the scheme that was able to make it interchangeable. You know, you, you mentioned some of the guys. I mean, we didn't even mention uh, Ryan Lewis and Teron Johnson, who also played a part in that in that secondary as well. You know, so we had constantly guys switching in and out. I mean, and let's talk about Vernon Davis for a second. Let's not forget about him. Um, oh, it's Vontae Vontae Davis. Davis. Vontae Davis. Or, I'm sorry, Vontae Davis. Right, 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 right. Uh, v Davis, I'll just call him that. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so we had a lot of interchanging parts to talk about the uh, on the defense. And, uh, and yeah, so it just talks to me about scheme between uh, between Frazier and McDermott, what they're able to do with, with these pieces. It's amazing, too, to me because you go right into camp and you go right into the season with Vontae Davis and Philip Gaines. Yeah. Two yeah. guys who are, you think are going to be stalwarts at the positions, and they don't they don't end up you know even finishing the year. They don't the finish team. the year. They don't do it. They don't do anything. But guys that you had on your practice squad and who you coached up mm -hmm. in this system were able to be successful yep. near the end of the year. It was interesting to see that how uh, how they're going to approach that going forward. Whether or not they think they can just coach anybody up that they bring in this yep. defense, or they're actually going to actively go after first or second round guys to right. put on this defense. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It is real interesting, you know, um, and, and Joe, we, you know, we mess around a lot. We call Teron Johnson Jughead. Um, yeah. Because, 
because he got hit with a football out of the jug machine at the combine. Um, you know, it's it's just funny to me every time we talk about Teron Johnson. I just I I want to correct people and be like, oh, Jughead, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Joe, if you had to give a grade, right, we're going to grade each level of the defense. If you had to give a grade for the defensive line, linebackers, and secondary for the 2018 season, how would you grade them out? As far as how they did, I would I would go defensive line. I, I would give I would give a lower grade to actually. I would probably about uh, but the ends. You know, you talk about defensive ends. I'd give a high grade there. I thought they did pretty well. But uh, so let's go let's go B minus for the. Uh, for the uh, defensive line, I'd give a B to the linebacking core, and then still probably a solid A for our corners and safeties. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, just to just to counter a little bit, I give Matt Milano an A plus. I give everybody else a C. So, <laughs> right, yeah, right, 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 right. Absolutely, I'm, I'm with you there. But I think there's yeah. a very big discrepancy between the level of play of the linebackers this season. Um, leave your hate in the comment section below. Uh, <laughs> right, Joe, thank you so much for joining us, man. And uh, we look forward to uh, watching your video on offense located on your channel, Believers Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Just wish I could enjoy some of that Tim Hortons with you. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, you can see our car. <laughs> Where's the camera, Joe? Where's the camera? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we'll talk to you.